Um, welcome and thank you for coming today. Um, we're here to learn some basic programming skills for Rochelle's communication device. I found a way to put it on the TV so everybody can see it at the same time. But before we start learning how to program Rochelle's communication device, I wanted you to kind of think about how Rochelle communicates now. She uses seven sounds in lieu of words. And I want you to try and think of how you can use those seven sounds to ask if you could go to the bathroom. Or to get out of your wheelchair, or just to ask a few color. I know that um, as I try to do that, I get really frustrated, and so I can easily understand how Rochelle gets so upset and so frustrated when she's trying to communicate her needs and, she, and her wants with such a limited vocabulary. In fact, her, re her ability to understand what's going on around her, but inability to be able to speak about it is the reason she has her alternative cognitive communication device in the first place. Um, in order to be able to learn to program myself, I took two courses with Dynavox, um, read all of the instruction manuals, spent eight hours with Lonnie Sanders and Lori Littlefield, um, and spent days programming myself. But we need to remember that as we learn to program, the programming is to help Rochelle. She is the priority. We are here to help her interact with her world, not just learn to make new pages or modify buttons. We need to be patient because it's going to take time and you probably would get frustrated as you try to learn. And um, the whole reason that I called you here is because learning to, take, to do the device is going to take continual adjustment and I'm not going to be able to do it all by myself. If you see a need in church or something, and you want to address that, that's why I want you to have those skills. And so together, working as a team, I hope that we can make Rochelle's device really functional for her so that she can become a meaningful communicator. In the Series 5 Dynavox Quick Max Start Guide, it says that its users, uh, the device users, must be able to access a variety of useful vocabulary as quickly as possible. Well, Rochelle's Apatoid CP mixed with her hardcore reflexes make targeting very, very, very difficult. Um, all of that movement affects her ability to target, but of course not her intelligence. So all of those movements and reflexes are creating a lot of mishits, as you may have seen. Um, NAU came down and did an evaluation and recommended that she, did, she try two-switch scanning or work with her feet, and we've had a lot of mishits with both methods. So we can see that mishits are going to be a problem. One thing that I've discovered really helps minimize mishits is putting the buttons in specific places to make it easier for her. Uh, and if you want to move the buttons when you're working with her, all you have to do, it's really easy, is go up to the blue arrow, click on it, go down to page editing, and down to swap buttons, and then you just click on the buttons you want to move. Simple. Um, once you have the buttons and the places you want, just hit modify at the top, and that turns off the swap button mode. But no matter how we place the buttons, if her device is not well programmed, it's kind of pointless. In fact, uh, the instruction manual suggests that we make her device organized, personal, meaningful, and fun, which I thought was a really useful phrase. And in order to do that, we have to think about what Rochelle needs and wants. Lori and Lonnie helped me when we first got her device to start the initial programming with that exact thing in mind. But that initial programming is limited to what we could think of at the time. So you're going to find things that need to be there and aren't. Um, and that's why we're here together to learn how to do this. So, if you find a need that you think needs to be addressed, the first thing we have to figure out is if there's a pre-programmed page that's pretty close to what you need, or if you're going to have to make a completely new page. And I'm going to show you how to do both methods. Pre-programmed pages make it a lot easier to do because all the buttons are in place, all the links are in place, and you just have to modify a few things. For example, when we started, the master page was similar to this, but it was a little bit different, so we've modified it. There's still one button on this modify page, the My Words page, 
that button, that Rochelle never, ever, ever uses. So I'm going to teach you how to modify a button by changing that one. To do it, you just click here on the modify button, go down to my words, and a menu will pop up. We're going to change my, and we're going to change the my words button to my family. We're going to change it just by changing the name. Oops, did I hit, no, nope, I hit it. Okay. Then we're going to change the next one, the audio cue. The same thing. Then we're going to use the symbol finder. It automatically pops up with the name of the label. Just hit search. And since we're going to do my family, we'll just choose this symbol that has the child with the wheelchair in it since Rochelle is in one. Then we don't want it to go to the basic level concepts, which is where it was going before. We want it to go to a page about her family. So we're going to change the behavior. Click on go to page. And it's already going to a different page. We just need to change the page it's going to. So we're going to edit that. The page it's going to doesn't exist yet. So we're going to click new page and we're going to make a new page. We're going to call it RW, capital R, capital W, capital F for family. It is important to remember exactly what you named it, capitalization and all. If you don't remember exactly, it won't work. However, if you mess it up, it's pretty easy to fix. So we've named our page and I've lost the cursor. There we go. Click OK. And that tells it to go to the family page. However, if you actually click on it, it doesn't work yet because that page doesn't exist. So in order to make the page for it to go to, we simply go to the blue arrow in the title bar, go down to page editing, quick page, and we're going to use a six button page. So we just click here and then select and name it exactly what we named it before. And is six the minimum buttons? Um, six is the, yeah, it's the minimum buttons. You can't have fewer than six on a page itself. And there's different kinds of pages which I can teach you about later. I'm just trying to teach you the basics right now. Uh, we're going to fill from text just because I think it's easier. You're always going to have to go in and adjust symbols or links or something like that, but it's just easier if you've got the things already labeled. So we're going to name each of the buttons um, one of the people in her family. So we're going to have mom, let me click next. We're going to have dad, we're going to click next, if it will cooperate, and Kaylee, and Kaden, Gavin, and then we need a way to get off of the page. So we're just going to name that go back. And there's her new page. Because we've already got the pictures for Kate and Gavin and Kaylee, those automatically popped up. But these are de the default pictures for mom and dad, so we'll have to go back in and later and, cha and change them. For now, though, we're just going to check and make sure that the link from the master page works. So we just clicked home to go back to the master page and then click on My Family, and it works. Um, as you can see from just these simple demonstrations, programming is vital. That is the way that we are going to be able to personalize Rochelle's device in order to make it work best for her. And that's our whole purpose, is enabling Rochelle to be able to communicate with her world the way she wants to. We have to remember to be patient, though. It, if you think about it, it took a long time for us to be able to, meet, to communicate meaningfully. It took years. And Rochelle's going to be the same way. It's going to take months, years, however long it takes for her to become good at communicating. Her method is just a little bit different. So if we remember that our new programming skills and her alternative augmentative communication device, which I think is a really funny word, um, using those two things together, we can help her finally be able to communicate meaningfully. Thank you for coming. And if you guys have any questions, I'd be glad to help you. If you guys want to try it out and learn how to do it, that would be great.